Now we're going to talk about how those unstable nuclei decay. This is called radioactivity. And this is something that's important because um, radioactivity is all around us, including radon, which is a radioactive material that, that you need to test your house for to make sure there's not too much radon in the soil underneath your house. It could be irradiating your kids and um, causing various health concerns. So let me start off with a demonstration. Today I'm going to demonstrate some radioactive materials that we, we see in everyday life. This is a Geiger counter and the back side of it detects uh, radioactivity. In each of these three sources, one, two, three, the source of radioactivity is alpha particles, which is the helium nucleus emitted by the radioactive material. This, uh, this is a Coleman lantern, has a little a lantern mantle that goes in a Coleman stove. It has um, some uh, thorium in it that's radioactive. This is a smoke detector and it has um, americium, also a radioactive material to help to detect um, smoke. So quite a good bit of um, radioactivity there. This is a piece of um, fiesta ware, a dinner plate with a glaze that has uranium oxide in it. These were manufactured before World War II and in fact there was enough uh, radioactivity in one of these plates that a woman placed a plate in a bag with some x-rays and the plate took a picture of itself on the, on the x-ray plates. So they're no longer manufactured. Um, it's especially dangerous when the plate is cracked, then the uranium oxide can get into your food and that's really not so good. This is a piece of lead that you can use to shield any of these sources. Alpha particles aren't that energetic and, um, and all you need to shield yourself from say, say this Coleman mantle is this um, lead. So there's no shielding, and here's with shielding, the same for the other sources. Um, so if you want to protect yourself against uh, various sources of radioactivity in your life, I suggest a lead suit. Since shooting this video, I've, I've learned that these sources also emit some beta and gamma radiation. So we're going to talk about these various sources. Alpha, beta, and gamma. So if you've got a radioactive material like uh, one of the sources that we should like to piece of that Fiesta ware, and it's in the presence of a magnetic field that's into the paper. So magnetic field is into the screen in this case. The, what's found is that, that there are two different types of radioactive particles emitted by the radioactive material that respond to the magnetic fields. One is called the alpha particle and it turns out it's, well, we can determine from this figure that it must be positively charged. How so? If its velocity is in this direction, using the concepts that we've talked about before, we put our thumb in the direction of the velocity, the magnetic field into the paper, the force on a positive uh, charged particle will be uh, in the direction of the palm. So the force is like that. And, uh, and we get a deflection in the upward direction. The beta particles, or beta rays, are deflected in the opposite direction 
and we do we find they must therefore be negatively charged so velocity magnetic field a positive charged particle would experience a force in this direction a negative one would be in the opposite direction so these must be negative and then there's a gamma ray that's emitted by these things that is uh, not deflected at all and um, it turns out that the gamma is not a particle at all it's a photon so alpha particles as it turns out that are emitted by these radioactively decaying nuclei the alpha particles they're nothing more or less than the helium nucleus two protons two neutrons uh, the beta and that's definitely positively charged has a charge of 2e because there's two protons in there and that's positive beta particles are just electrons it has a charge minus e and definitely has a negative charge and then photons is uh, is, is not a particle of all uh, you could think of it as a particle it's a particle of light so uh, but of no mass so the three types of rays emitted by a disintegrating radioactive nucleus so what happens to that nucleus when it emits some of these particles if it emits a beta particle I'm sorry an alpha particle it's changing the number of protons in the nucleus it's no longer the element that you're talking about it's a, it's at least depending on how many alpha, uh, helium nuclei uh, are, are emitted uh, it's going to be an, an element that's lighter has a smaller number of protons in the nucleus so a disintegrating ra radioactive nucleus in order of increasing ability to penetrate matter alpha rays um, have the least ability to penetrate matter and it, as you saw in the demo we put just a little thin piece of lead and we pretty much eliminated the alpha rays or alpha particles they can be called either one because it really is just a particle it's a helium nucleus um, that's sometimes called a ray beta ray is just an electron like we talked about or beta particle gamma ray is a gamma photon now let's uh, remember about um, the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, the various wavelengths of different uh, materials uh, the longest wavelengths and the least damaging to the human body were radio waves and then it, moving to shorter and shorter wavelengths we came to infrared then to visible then to ultraviolet then to x-rays and then to gamma rays are the are the ones that we talked about two th three four five six yeah and um, gamma rays were by far the shortest wavelength and most energetic if the wavelengths are short remember in the couple chapters ago we talked about the energy of a photon is Planck's constant times the frequency but if the wavelength is small then the frequency must be high and so these gamma ray particles are extremely energetic they they have very high energies these gamma ray photons and so that's why these guys have an ability to penetrate uh, through matter this is uh, an example of a, a nuclear radioactive nuclear decay of uranium uranium 238 is a radioactive um, atom radioactive nucleus with 92 protons and a total atomic uh, nucleon number of nucleon number of 238 that decays into thorium with instead of 92 90 and instead of 238 234 plus this helium nucleus and you say well that's just an alpha ray and I say it sure is that's an alpha ray with a nucleon number of four so quite clearly 238 minus four equals 234 and a number of protons of two which is clearly 92 uh, minus 90 gives two so this is an alpha uh, 
decay. And this is called an alpha particle or an alpha ray, this guy here. Um, so that's the first stage of the decay of uranium. What about this second stage of decay? This thorium is also radioactive, as, uh, and thorium is one of the elements that was used in that Coleman lantern mantle, the little thing you light in a lantern in the demo that we showed. It decays by this reaction, and what it emits is an electron. So this is the weird old way of writing, right, the, the, the world's weirdest way of writing the symbol for an electron. It has zero nucleons, and it has a negative one proton. So it's just a weird way. It's just an electron. That's what it is. A negatively charged electron. And we still have um, yeah. We're, we're getting we, we went from a from 90 protons to 91. So we've actually increased the number of protons in the nucleus by one and and then got an extra electron along along the deal. So this is actually beta decay. All right. Let's define the weak nuclear force. It is and, and again, the level of math required to really study the weak nuclear force is way beyond the level of this class. It's a graduate uh, physics level. But I want you to get a taste for what these forces are because it relates to the, the entire force of, of nature, the, the three fundamental forces of nature. So the weak nuclear force is responsible for the emission of beta rays. So what's a beta ray? You say, it's an electron. And I say, yes, it is. Um, beta decay also can be in the form of a positron, which is a positively charged electron, which I haven't really talked about. But so that's just a statement of fact. It's this weak nuclear force that is required to build into the theories in order to understand this radioactive decay through beta decay. The electroweak force, as we talked about in the very second slide of the whole um, chapter, the weak nuclear force, that's this force that's responsible for beta decay. The electric force, and what's the electric force? I'm talking about F equals QE. That's the electric force. It's just you place, in a, um, place a charged particle in an electric field, and it experiences a force. The magnetic force. <coughs> that is the one where we have the magnitude of that magnetic force was Q, the charge, times the speed of the particle. We got zero force if the speed was zero, times the uh, strength of the magnetic field times the angle, sine of the angle between the force, uh, between the velocity and the magnetic field. And then we use the right hand rule with the thumb in the direction of the velocity, fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, like we talked about before, um, and the palm pushes in the direction of the force. So the, the three of these forces seem very different. The electric force, the weak nuclear force, or sometimes just called the weak force, um, but they are, thanks to the work uh, by Glashow, Salam, and Weinberg in, in 1979. They received a Nobel Prize for their theoretical work that united these three forces and showed that these three forces that seem so very different from each other are actually man different manifestations of the same fundamental force called the electroweak force. So there's a lot of physics in the electroweak force. Ultimately, that's the, the force, uh, uh, the normal force comes from them. Uh, friction forces is ultimately uh, due to the electroweak force. 
And um, the only things that are not included in this electroweak force are the strong force that binds the nucleons together and gravitation. So your three fundamental forces of nature, like we did in the, like we showed in the second slide, is the electroweak. So these forces are the same. We call it electroweak because it's el electromagnetic forces coupled with weak forces. It's all understood in, in the same uh, framework. Gravitational forces and strong force. So those are the three, three basic forces of nature. And you might say, well, do you think there's ever, there ever might come a time when we can understand gravity in terms of the strong force, or the strong force in terms of the electroweak force? Are those three fundamental forces different manifestations of the same fundamental overall overarching force? And most physicists that you would ask that question to would say, yes, we think they are different manifestations of the same force. And the person who is able to show that they are will get a Nobel Prize. I'm not on the Nobel Prize committee, but they will. Because that is like the holy grail of physics. Uh, a couple of applications, gamma knife or radio surgery. So uh, there's a radioactive cobalt atom that's used as a source, and it emits gamma rays. What's gamma rays? They're not particles, they're just electromagnetic waves. So these gamma rays go down through these um, perforations in this giant helmet, and then they're, they're focused in on a particular target, a cancer tumor or um, a, a blood vessel that's an aneurysm in the brain, et cetera, and it destroys that tissue. The, the cool thing about the gamma knife is that <coughs> since, the, since the rays are focused on a particular spot, these, the amount of, of gamma rays that is received in the healthy tissue outside of the target, the, the damage is very small. And, and so you can target, you can get into a, a tumor that's deep within the brain without having to cut through layers of healthy tissue and damage healthy tissue in the process. It's an amazing, uh, an amazing process. Um, another use of radioactivity. I actually did this one time. You get on a treadmill and then they inject you with a little bit of thallium, which is a radioactive material, and it emits um, gamma rays also. And so you, you get on a treadmill, you get your heart rate up, and then they inject the thallium in there, and then they, take, they have to take an image of, the, uh, of your heart muscle and places where the thallium concentrates uh, means that you're getting good blood circulation to that, that part of the heart, but where you see in the image um, that there, there isn't as much blood, that could be a possible indication of, uh, of arterial blockages in the heart. 